What is up guys and welcome back to another video. So today we're talking about Final Fantasy vs World of Warcraft and I don't want to sound like I'm critiquing either of the games and I definitely don't want to tell you guys which one you should play but what I do want is to give you guys an overview of both the different games and kinda compare them to each other in different aspects of both games. Now don't worry, this is not turning into a Final Fantasy channel. I pretty much always have and always will talk about World of Warcraft on this channel, but I have played a lot of Final Fantasy in the past, and due to recent events with World of Warcraft, I found myself resubscribing to Final Fantasy and playing that a little bit on the side again. And I wanted to highlight some of the major differences that I've noticed so far. I think competition is great for MMORPGs, so seeing Final Fantasy get a lot of hype right now, I think is great for the scene itself, and I also think playing different games than just WoW is good for avoiding burnout. So I guess we'll just get right into it. Two different audiences. Final Fantasy XIV is a massively story driven game, and the story is a massive part of the game as well as your gameplay experience. If you ask any Final Fantasy player what their favourite memory of the game is, or their favourite location within the game itself, it's most likely tied to the story in one way or another. While WoW is a lot more grindy, and targets either the type of player that just needs to grind for something, or the more hardcore player offering insanely difficult raids that usually take months of consistent progress to defeat on the highest difficulty. While WoW has been doubling down on this type of hardcore type of content, trying to turn WoW into more of an esports with their Mythic Plus tournaments, arena tournaments, and race to world first raiding, Final Fantasy has remained the same, it pretty much always has been, and kept building upon the story of the game itself, keeping the story an important main pillar of the game, and staying more true to the MMORPG genre, if I can put it that way. So mounts, farming mounts in a game like WoW can be both beautiful and frustrating, depending on how you look at it. Oh my god! Oh my- <laughs> What? <gasps> 199 attempts! Some mounts can drop from rains, usually with incredibly low drop rates, and others drop from rare mobs in the open world, also with incredibly low drop rates. Some mounts you buy, some mounts you craft, some you get from reputation, and so on. I want to focus on the more of on the story on the mounts you with low drop rates here, since that really shows you the difference between WoW and Final Fantasy when it comes to mounts. So in WoW you have mounts with low, with about one percent drop drop chance, and maybe even lower than that as well, that can drop from certain raids and dungeons such as for example Invincible from Ice Crown Citadel, which a lot of players have been trying to obtain for years, with no success. Final Fantasy has the same system, but they also have a fail-safe mechanic, which basically works like this. Every time, you obtain, uh, every time you try to obtain a mount like that, you get a token, and after 100 tokens, you can straight up buy the mount. This ensures that either after 100 attempts, you will have your mount, which also helps or ensures that you won't be stuck farming it in 2035. To some players, this might devalue the mount itself, but the way I look at it, you still have to put in the effort, and if the system was in WoW, you wouldn't have to waste your time farming Invincible week after week for 10 plus years now. Also, while WoW has a lot of reskins when it comes to mounts, just to give you a bigger number of mounts to grind, so you can show off how many different mounts you have, not sure if you can say different, but they are kind of different. Final Fantasy has far less mounts and far less recolors, but the mounts they do have are absolutely beautiful. So PvP. I'll be honest here, if you're looking for PvP within a MMO, Final Fantasy probably isn't the one for you. But to be honest, World of Warcraft probably isn't either, but it definitely is a better choice than Final Fantasy. PvP has never really been a pillar of the game at all in Final Fantasy, and just to expl explain it simply, in WoW there are two factions that are naturally at war with each other, so from the start of the game and in the story itself, 
there is a war and PvP going on. In Final Fantasy, you don't have that faction system, and there are no real wars in the story, at least not between players, and if anything else, the players are trying to work together to unite the different factions and races of Eorzea. Eorzea is kind of the Astaroth of Final Fantasy, just so you know. So, PvE. When it comes to PvE, Final Fantasy and WoW is very much the same in the, same, in the sense that it offers different types of content, at different difficulties, and at different party ranges. In WoW you, you will usually find 5 man, 10 man or 20 man content, while in Final, Final Fantasy, a light party consists of 4 people, a full party consists of 8 people, and a raid consists of 3 full parties, e aka 24 people in total. So where WoW has 5 man content, Final Fantasy has 4 man, where WoW has 10 man content, Final Fantasy has 8 man, and where WoW has 20 man content, Final Fantasy has 24 man content. When it comes to the difficulty of the different types of content, both games will offer different difficulties based on the player's desires. And for example, WoW will offer you looking for raid, normal, heroic and mythic versions of raids, and Final Fantasy will offer you normal and savage difficulties. With the latest expansion, you also have ultimate difficulty on certain raid tiers, so 2 to 3 difficulties. You also have trials in Final Fantasy that is different from raids and is 8 man content, but it's basically looking for raid but without the raid itself. You can basically fight difficult bosses, and on each trial, only has one boss in encounter. You also have high-end trials offering you, well, more difficult trials. Now, while the style of content and even gear progression is fairly similar across both games, the one major difference that I want to point out is that you most likely won't have an end boss that takes months of progression in Final Fantasy, and as long as you have a raiding guild with enough skill, it should be doable fairly fast. While in WoW you have people dedicate 20 hours per week and still need weeks and months of progression to clear one raid tier. So I guess what I'm saying is that if you want to spend 20 hours a week for several months to progress in a raid, Final Fantasy might not be your best choice and WoW might be the better option for you, but raid content in Final Fantasy is definitely both challenging and rewarding as well. So respecting the player's time. One thing I think you might have picked up by now is that Final Fantasy respects your time as a player. You don't have to spend 20 hours a week for several months to progress through a raid here, and for that matter you also don't have 12 bosses in one raid either. You skip all of the worthless filler bosses and go straight into action. You also have the failsafe mechanic on low drop chance mounts that also prevents you from wasting years of your life grinding for one mount. And to top it all off, while WoW has systems in place to keep you playing the game all day instead of playing to have fun, you play because you feel like you have to. The developers of Final Fantasy has clearly stated that they don't care if you play other games and they want you to get the content that you want out of Final Fantasy and then feel free to play something else. I'll quote Asmongold here and say, Games should make you want to waste your time not actually waste your time, and this is where Final Fantasy outperforms WoW massively. Also, while WoW wants you to compete, complete several Mythic Plus dungeons weekly for a weekly rewards in a chest or vault, in Final Fantasy all you have to do is a daily dungeon to obtain some two tombstones, and you probably won't even have to do that every single day either if you actually do some raids, but if you do decide to do a daily dungeon, I should also say that your daily dungeon rewards you with a bunch of experience that you could use to level up your other jobs, which brings me to my next point. Jobs versus classes. So in World of Warcraft you have classes, and in Final Fantasy you have jobs. In essence, these are pretty similar in the way that your class or your job pretty much defines your character. In WoW you can be a hunter, a mage, or even a warrior. Same thing in Final Fantasy as well, you have archers that are similar to hunters, you have bards that are a support type hunter, you have black mages, red mages, berserkers, dark knights, and you get the point. You have different jumps for different playstyles to hopefully give everyone a playstyle they enjoy. Now here's where the important difference comes in. 
In World of Warcraft, once you've chosen a class, you are locked to that class. If you're a hunter, you're a hunter for life, or until you level up a new character, meaning that if you ever get bored of being a hunter and want to try something new, you would have to level up from scratch all over again. In Final Fantasy, however, if you get bored of your class or your job, you can easily switch to something entirely different, but you will have to level that up from scratch as well, but the difference is that you can do it on the same character. Imagine you had one character in WoW, and you could be all of the classes, all you had to do is level those classes up. Well, that's kind of how it is in Final Fantasy. Leveling up your alt classes or alt jumps is also easily done via the daily dungeon that I talked about earlier that gives you a massive chunk of experience and combine that with stuff like world quests or I guess I just should call them fates and leveling up these alt jumps becomes not just efficient but also incredibly fun. The way you just decide which class you're playing is simply by which weapon you're using. So for example, if you equip a hunter's bow, you're a hunter. If you then equip a staff, you're a mage. If you equip a miner's pickaxe, you're a miner, meaning that you can change your class and your job on demand at any time without having to go to a rested location or any city or talk to a NPC. I guess I'll add some of my own opinions to kind of wrap this video up. If you enjoy PvP and the MMORPG, World of Warcraft might be your type of a game or more your type of game than Final Fantasy is. If you enjoy massive challenges in the PvE scene that takes weeks or months of progression, World of Warcraft might be more your type of game than Final Fantasy is. That being said, I want to say that the raid fights and dungeons in Final Fantasy can also be incredibly challenging and the fights themselves are incredibly beautiful. If you enjoy fast paced gameplay, and all you care about is getting to the end game, World of Warcraft might suit you better than Final Fantasy. While leveling in WoW you don't have a lot of cutscenes, and the ones you do have are usually fairly quick. In Final Fantasy, especially with the main story questline, there is a whole bunch of cutscenes, and while these are skippable, I would highly recommend you watch them, as they play a vital part in the story itself. Speaking of story, if you enjoy story and lore, Final Fantasy is just a much better game overall. The story is cohesive and great, and most of all, the entire story is being told within the game itself, either through the quests, the NPC dialogue, or through the quest, the, the cutscenes. When I first played through the entire main story questline back in A Realm Reborn, I was, uh, which was when I started playing Final Fantasy, I was genuinely moved by the end of it, and you almost start crying from an in-game story. One thing a lot of MMORPGs are lacking these days is the sense of mystery. In WoW, a patch always has an alpha and then a beta test, and is data mined to the point where nothing is new. For 9.1, I pretty much knew 75% of the entire patch before it ever came out, thanks to data mining and content creators, and the same thing has been going on for several expansions by this point. I mean, I even played the alpha or the beta of Legion and BFA, and I knew pretty much 90% of what was in those expansions before they came out, but even if I hadn't played the alpha or the beta myself, someone else would have, and they would have data mined the information and made it public somewhere. In Final Fantasy, you don't have any public alpha or beta tests for patches or expansions, you just wait for them to come out, and when a new game update comes out, pretty much everything is new to everyone, which creates a sense of mystery, and it genuinely makes you a lot more excited about those content updates to the game. As of right now, Final Fantasy reminds me of early days Classic WoW. The community is absolutely amazing, and incredibly welcome to WoW refugees. There is a novice helper system in the game where you basically, they put you into a novice chat where you can ask questions, and people will help you understand the game better, and the world itself feels a lot more alive than World of Warcraft, you will see people out in the open world pretty much anywhere. Dungeon queues are fairly quick because there's always they're, they're always relevant, so even lower level dungeons can be done by high level players, as your level will just be scaled down, and in general it's just incredibly new player friendly, and based on there being a new expansion coming out in November, I don't think there has ever been a better time to play Final Fantasy if you haven't played it before. There's also a free trial that lets you do pretty much all of the content that is currently in the game right now, so you can even play it for free. 
One last thing that I'll say for Final Fantasy is that for example in WoW people quest to get to the end game as fast as possible, but for Final Fantasy you really want to take your time, appreciate every single quest, watch the cutscenes, pay attention to the story, the story is a massive part of the game, so once again take your time, do the quests, do all of the content, don't use the boost, you're basically paying to skip content, don't do that, just do the main story, appreciate everything, it's absolutely beautiful. So that's it. And I think that's pretty much what I have for now guys. I will probably not make too many Final Fantasy videos on this channel, as I want to keep the channel clean if that makes sense. So expect the same WoW videos as before, but I do want to say that I have a second channel, where I might make some Final Fantasy videos just to talk further on a couple of things I pick up as I play it more, so feel free to subscribe to my second channel, it really helps me out, and it's basically the channel where I will upload content on any game that I play. So with that said you guys, thank you all so much for watching this video, if you made it to the end I truly appreciate you, make sure you give the video a thumbs up before you leave, and let me know in the comments if there's any other questions you want to ask about Final Fantasy, and if you want to play on the same server as me, I play on the Phoenix server in Europe. Alright boys, that's it, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.